Hello students, today we will be talking about dielectric constant, then we will move to the superposition principle and the types of charge distribution. Now you see here dielectric constant, you see when the charges are separated by air or vacuum, we were writing the force as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 upon r square. What was this epsilon naught? This was permittivity of free space, right? Now, when the same arrangement of charges which are held at the same distance, but I change or I put it in other medium, so instead of epsilon naught, everything would be same as such, but instead of epsilon naught, we will write here epsilon, that is permittivity of a medium. Here also the force also we will write with some other term, I have put the, on the base M, M on the base of F. Right? So, we have two equations. So, now if I divide equation 1 by 2, we have F by Fm is equal to epsilon upon epsilon naught and this ratio of the forces we call as dielectric constant or you can write it with Er also. This is relative permittivity. So, one thing which is worth noting here is you see if we change the medium, the force which was in air now in medium the force is considerably reduced the force would always be reduced when you change the medium principle of superposition you can see here we have a collection of charges q not q1 q2 q3 i have taken three charges here only you can take more of charges also up to qn and here i have placed another charge q not this is for, uh, called as a test charge or we call it as a unit positive charge so, if I ask you to calculate the forces between these two, you can easily calculate using Coulomb's law. Now, you remember one more important thing because we have to deal with the continuous charge distribution. This Coulomb law is valid only for the point charge. What is a point charge now? An electric charge which exists at a single point, exists at a single point which has neither area nor volume. So, this is a point charge. So, we can apply the Coulomb's law straight away, right? So, we can calculate the force here. What, it, what that would be? K Q1 Q0 upon R1 plus square. And what would be the direction of force on Q0? This is F01. What does this represent? Force on Q0, Q2, Q1. Similarly, because of Q2 charge, the direction of the force will be F02. And similarly, due to Q3, it is F03. But what supposed to find we have to find the net charge on q naught q2 for these three charges so if this is the case we use the principle of superposition now what does it state the net force on a charge can be found by vector addition of the forces due to the individual charge that means we will find all the charges all the forces and then we will add them vectorially Right? With the vector law of addition, we will add all the forces. That would be the net forces acting on Q0. Remember, the second important point is net force is unaffected by the presence of other charges. L let's say what let's say these two other charges. Okay. Right? So what was the force? K Q0 Q2 upon R2 cos square. Right? If I add this charge also. Q3. Suppose if I add this charge here in the system, this force, the force between the two would not be affected. Similarly, if I remove this charge from here, the force between the two will remain unaffected. Right? So, if I have to find the net force on Q0, I'll write simply F net Q0 O Q0 for Q0. Force on Q0. Net force on Q0. That would be F01 plus F02 plus F03 depending on the number of charges you have, right? Now, continuous charge distribution. Remember when we were doing the superposition, I told you that Coulomb's law is valid only for point charges and then only we can apply it. Now, if you see here, this, this I have taken a shape, uh, a irregular shape. Let's say I have given a charge Q to it, right? This is now not a point charge. So, if again I have given a test charge here Q naught and I am asked to find the net force on Q naught due to this 
irregular body then how would i find now we cannot directly apply the coulomb law here remember that is, that is only applied when you have a point charge so what instead we will be doing this i have divided in the area uh, along the area so what i will be doing i will divide this into small small sections right so what i will do then let's say here also so what i will do i will take consider this small section having a charge tq so now i have this point charge tq and i will find the force now i can apply coulomb's law i'll find the force between these two charges which two charges q not and dq whatever is the distance that we will take and then what again we will take all these point charges all the point charges and then we will combine together when we this is a now continuous distribution of charges and when we combine it what what is the addition called in mathematics what is the term used in mathematics for that that we call as integration so what first what is the first step to find the force we will find first step we'll find the force what is the force due to this that this, since the charge is small so force also would be small that would be df right then what we will do we will integrate df within proper limits so next topic for us is so this is a type of charge charges distributed here along the area so likewise we have three type of charge distribution like i gave you an idea what a continuous charge distribution is so continuous charge distribution we have of three types one is linear charge density that means when the charge is distributed along a line this is a wire that means that in this case the length of the wire is very large compared to the diameter similarly the ring if i provide if i charge this wire the charge is distributed throughout the length similarly here along the circumference second is your surface charge distribution when the charge you give and it is distributed along the surface like here is an example of metal sphere if you charge a metal sphere only the charge will accumulate on the surface so this is a surface charge you can see here similarly for the metal sheet third is your volume charge distribution where the i have taken an example of non conducting sphere so the charge would be distributed throughout its volume and same here in the cube now what now there is there are two three denotion here denotions also are there like for linear charge density we denote it with the word lambda which means charge per unit length and if i write its unit so it is coulomb per meter right similarly surface charge density is denoted by sigma that is charge now i cannot write l because l does not make any sense this is a area so charge per unit area coulomb per meter square this is its si unit for sigma similarly your volume charge distribution which is given by rho that is charge per unit volume clear and the unit si unit if i say it is coulomb per meter cube right now again you see what the step would be so the method of calculating force in case of continuous charge distribution is how first calculate the small force df due to a point charge then integrate it within the proper limits like i'll i'll take one example in case of linear charge density let's say you have a charge distributed along the wire right i'll take like this and you have to calculate the force here on q not so what i'll be doing i'll take a small section of this wire let it has a charge dq and the length of this element is dl right now let me join these two points let's say the distance is r so what is the force due to this the force forces what is the value for force 
again the formula is what but i will not say this is f because this this charge is small so i'll say df is equals to k q not dq upon 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 r square right and if you need to write the vector in vector form you write it in the vector clear now i said you integrate it within proper limits integrate means you will be writing df why we are saying integration because this small charge like here similarly this this charge for all the charge continuous charges if we add up all together obviously the we have to do the differentiation the integration only so the i have put the sign of integration so this is here f right same here also i will put k q not dq upon r square this was the case of continuous charge distribution which type linear type so lambda was what lambda is a linear charge and see that was q by l i wrote but here the charge is dq so dq upon dl so what is the value of dq it is lambda dl right so i will substitute the value for it here so f would be f would be k q not take the r square outside and here are the limits i have put the integration sign what is dq lambda dl clear so like this way if i have to calculate for uh, surface charge density it would be k q not integration lambda instead of lambda what we will write sigma ds upon r square or you can take r square or you write it here or and for the volume charge distribution it would be k q not rho dv upon r square right this way we will be calculating the force in the continuous charge distribution